<laughs> the Cash App is Lady Speech. The Venmo is Lady Speech Sankofa. The PayPal is Lady Speech Sankofa at gmail.com. Go ahead and uh, put something on them books for some gas money because I'm about to take you to church and drop you off at school. All oh, the willfully ignorant. It is your fault because it is your men, the men you raise. It is your sons that put us in this position. Your husbands, it is you and yours who did this. It is your fault because it is your culture, which is reinforced by your white privilege. The culture of the colonizer that got us in this mess, see? The colonizer has always been fucking with the reproductive rights of black and indigenous women. And you said nothing. Not only have you said nothing while they were over here fucking with us, you enabled it, you encouraged it, you uplifted, and you raised more men and white women to reinforce it and protect it. It is your fault because in America, 53% of white women voted for Trump twice. Y'all put that pedo into office y'all did that honey that was you that was you it is your fault and all of us problem because this roe versus wade situation them lowering the age of consent in many states is connected to y'all's low birth rate. It's connected to the fact that you've always been pawns for white supremacy and you had a piece of privilege inside of that. So you never fought back because you could lord power over other people marginalized people. It is your fault because you have been acting like nothing but reproductive receptacles for years. And you were comfortable in that because you had white privilege on your side. Yes, honey, it's your fault. You raise the men. You cultivate the culture, the white colonizer culture. This is on you. Black, brown, and indigenous women have always fought back. Since the first contact with the colonizer, we've always fought back. It is you. It is you who created the culture. It is you who enabled this. It is you, and now we are here. We are here. This is your doing. Now give me some gas money, because I took you to church and I dropped your ass off at school. Well, <laughs> like, okay, let's get, let's be serious, let's be serious. <sighs> hello, hello, hello. My name is Madison, and welcome to the Madison One channel. And today, we are going to do another installment of Black Girl Reacts, but for this one, it's kind of a departure because if you don't know by now, or if you've been living under a rock, Roe v. Wade has been overturned in the United States. And if you don't know what Roe v. Wade is, it basically was in the constitution. It was a constitutional right given to people with uteruses to have the ability to terminate a pregnancy as they saw fit, the right to choose how their life goes, the right for autonomy over their own bodies, and the right to decide whether or not they wanted a child or not. Now, basically, overturning Roe v. Wade by the Supreme Court essentially made it so there isn't a federal mandate that makes it so p women and people with uteruses have the right to have, you know, abortion things, abortion care, the right to choose to have an abortion nationally, federally. What it means now is that it's up to the individual states on whether or not they are going to support having 
access to healthy, safe abortions to people with uteruses. So as we know, quick, 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 a bunch of Republican-ran states have essentially banned all sorts of um, legislation, all sorts of access to getting an abortion for people with uteruses. And um, it happened with a quickness. Um, Some of these bills that are being passed in these Republican states are truly dystopian, truly fascist, and truly disgusting. And my heart truly, truly goes out to all people with uteruses who have to suffer in those states because it's going to be a lot of them and it, it, it really is unfortunate but today we are going to do a couple things because i went on live talking about this i have several videos on my tiktok talking about this topic specifically actually i'm going to take these off now the effect is over <laughs> but I wanted still to have a chance to say my piece in the way I want to say it um, in long form content. So what we are going to do with this video, we are going to start with me screaming about my opinion about Roe v. Wade, and then we are going to react to three three jubilee media videos where they discuss they do the middle ground show where they have people from opposing sides um, meet in the middle and discuss their opinions on why they're on whatever side now they have made three different videos on pro-choice versus um, pro-life and ultimately i put a little poll in my youtube community tab so If you aren't subscribed yet, or if you're just finding me for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Let's get the business out of the way. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification in order to be notified whenever I post a new video. Comment on this video. Like this video, please. It helps it in the algorithm. I really, really appreciate it. We are so close to monetization that it's like crazy. So please help your girl out. Help this video get ride that algorithm wave, all right? And if you're returning... I love you very much. Thank you for coming back. But like I was saying, I, in my community tab, posted a poll that asked everyone, do you want me to do just the most recent video that Jubilee made on um, pro-choice, pro-life? Do you want me to do the second most recent one or the two most recent ones? Or do you want me to do all three? And overwhelmingly, people voted for all three. So this is going to be a longer video just because I'm going to say my piece and then we're going to react to these different Jubilee videos. What is going to be interesting is we're going to see how the conversation changes over the years because I think the oldest video is about three years old. So it'll be interesting with new eyes knowing that it has been overturned. It's not even a topic of conversation for real anymore. Um what changes amongst those four years and all of that. So I'm really, really excited. But first, let me complain a little bit. So I have a little bit of a shit list. It's right here by my side that I'm going to use to keep me on track. And we're going to go point for point who I'm most annoyed by right now because of this legislation. And um, I think the best best way to start is to call out the democrats so all democratic people in charge senators congress people our president legislators all of you come to the front because it is your time for me to rip you a new asshole okay now I wouldn't even at this point in my life, what I've seen, what's been going on in this country, I've been definitely radicalized over the years to be a leftist individual, for sure. Um, I believe reparations. I believe we should burn this mother effer down and build up something new that actually helps people. Um, Medicare for all, all of the things that people like to quote as communists and socialists, all of those things I want. Reparations, giving back the land to the native indigenous people who lived here um all of those things i honestly um am frustrated at this point politically because i feel like i'm being constantly gaslit and lied to by the democratic party 
I don't understand when this Roe v. Wade conversation and this Roe v. Wade fight has been literally 40, 50 years strong. The other side, the conservatives have been organizing around this topic since Roe v. Wade was made legal, okay? So miss me with the shock, miss me with the appall, miss me with the you singing on the Capitol steps, miss me with you doing yoga poses on your Twitter to calm you, miss me with any kind of thing that is trying to commiserate with the average person with a uterus at this time, okay? Honestly, miss me with it because not only have you had several times to codify Roe v. Wade, when you were in power, most recently Obama had a supermajority and could have codified it, but chose not to. Okay, I, I'm just so tired of you campaigning on human rights issues when you're just gonna not do anything. How is it that you always get caught with your pants down and your ass in the in the wind every fucking time the conservatives do something? And you know what it's starting to make me feel like, you know, I feel like I'm starting to catch on to y'all's game, to be honest, because how is it that every time our rights are on the table for you to fight for, you do effing nothing about it you don't do anything to push for it you lie to us while you're campaigning that you're gonna fight for it then when you get elected you say you don't have the power to you did this with the younger generation when it came to student loans you've done this with the people in prison for marijuana offenses who've been there for half their lives that you said you would get out and legalize marijuana you that you've done this with every little tenant that you've campaigned on you did this to black people after the george floyd stuff in 2020 like you never have any follow-through but then act surprised when the party that is supposed to be your enemy your nemesis the people you're actively fighting against to help the greater good of the people of this country it seems like they're screaming and telling you exactly what they want to do exactly how they want to make this country into their image exactly who they want in this country exactly how they want this country to run and you act surprised when they actually do it i'm starting to feel like you guys literally want them to do it which to me is worse. There's a lot of people on TikTok online talking about how you guys are two sides of the same coin. And I'd have to agree with that knowledge. You can't have evil without good. You can't have the good cop without the bad cop. And I honestly, honestly believe that that's the game you want to play. Like I do. I I honestly believe that that's how it is. Because you campaign on these things, but never do anything to actually help people. You act like you're so shocked that the conservatives are the way they are when they've been the way they were since the beginning of time. And you never have any contingency plans to fight against legislation, the voting rights laws, the failures in the Senate, the the bills, the infrastructure bill, all of these bills that died in the Senate. You, you never have any contingency plan. So what I'm starting to vibe from you guys is that you need the republicans you need them to be loud racist neo-nazis you need them to be extremists so you can point the finger and say well we're not them right because you can't stand on your accomplishments and to me i also feel like you want these things to actually happen because what in the world why in the world would you be gambling with people's human rights and never ever have a contingency plan to make sure those rights are protected it's strange it's giving you think it's giving wolf in sheep's clothing and i hate that at least i know that the people on the right especially the unhinged people are doing what they're doing and they're saying it with their chest. You like to cower in silence in the darkness in the corner while they do your bidding when you do nothing to stop it because you have no accomplishments on your side and I'm exhausted. I'm so 
fucking tired of my rights as a human being not only because i'm a person with the uterus but because i'm black in this country okay i'm tired of my rights being used and talked about only when it's beneficial for you only when it's beneficial for you to get donations off of only when it's beneficial for you to say we're not like them vote for us didn't you say joe biden you're not black unless you vote for me but what have you done for the black community at all what have you done for people with uteruses this is a huge fucking failure and i'm disgusted i'm disturbed and you still want us to vote in the midterms for you when you've literally promised us so many things that you could not deliver you couldn't raise nationally the minimum wage you said you were going to give us two thousand dollars stimulus checks you gave us fourteen hundred dollars stimulus checks you said you would cancel student loan debt still haven't gotten that on paper you said you would legalize marijuana federally still haven't done that So why are you even here? I'm done. I'm exhausted and I'm done. And all those people who are just saying, go vote, we need to vote, we need to vote. I always vote. And I'm so tired of my voice, my civic duty not even mattering. Because we have the fucking Senate, the House, and the fucking presidency. And nothing at all has increased or improved nothing has been passed to really increase the material experiences that marginalized people feel the most of in this country we haven't done anything about that so stop emailing me nancy you're not getting money from me moving on (sighs) okay I guess the second people on my shit list, so move to the front, are white women. And this may be hard to hear, but you guys claim that you guys on TikTok, you want dialogue about why black women, indigenous women, and women of color are not riding with you during this thing. We told you in May when the Supreme Court was leaked about the Roe v. Wade thing. We're telling you again now that it was overturned. And if you claim to want the dialogue to actually learn and understand why we're not fucking with you like that, why we're focusing on our own issues and not trying to do the false thing of saying, oh, it all affects us. We know it affects us. But you never fight for anything that affects us solely. You only fight, you only step into the ring for something if it touches your life because you guys are inherently selfish. There is historical precedence, okay, for us teaming up with you time and time again. You selling us dreams about how we're all fighting together, how we're all sisters, how we're all helping each other forward. We organize. We do what we do because we, it's in our DNA. Because we always have had, because ha, ha, we've always been marginalized. So we've always had to rely on these systems in order to get any kind of rights in this country. You use us for those ideas, you use us for our hard emotional labor, and then when it comes down to the rights being handed out, you get yours and you don't turn to even say thank you back to the people who still haven't gotten theirs yet. You don't even continue the fight to fight for. All of us who helped you along the way. That happened with suffrage in the suffrage movement. Because black people and the women suffragettes were working together until white women were able to get the right to vote. And they still and they stopped fighting for it as soon as they got what they wanted out of the movement. Feminism, same thing. Feminism, same thing, even though it's concepts based on fucking situations and life experience that people of color, women of color have been talking about for years. You co-opted the movement and got all of the things and you never turned back to help pull up your fellow sisters that you were begging for help in the first place. And I'm done. And this generation is done because we've watched generation after generation after generation of people of color 
ally with you in the hopes that they will also get the rights that they deserve to be seen as full-fledged human beings in this country and treated as such but as soon as you get what your rights are what you specifically wanted out of the movement you don't give a fuck about us And let me also tell you this, because we are unfortunately um, collateral damage in this situation. What's really happening is this is a beef between you and white men in this country. This is your guys' fight for real, for real. And unfortunately, we're collateral damage, but we know how to organize. We know how to shake the room. And we are going to continue to organize in our communities to make sure our people are good. We are going to set up the pathways, the access, all of the things that people need in order to get what they need in our community. We've done it before. We'll do it again. So don't worry about us. This is actually genuinely a fight between you and your oppressor, white men. So we're going to break that down a little bit. We're going to get into some things. We're going to break that down a little bit. There is a book called The Birth Dearth, and I'm going to insert a clip of the OG bad bitch Jane Elliott discussing it here. People are really frightened. If you don't understand the destruction of Planned Parenthood uh, offices, and you don't understand the wall that we're going to build on the southern border of the United States, you haven't read the book The Birth Dearth by Ben Wattenberg. Ben Wattenberg was a brilliant Jewish man who was a member of the American Enterprise Institute, and he wrote a book, the first paragraph of which says, The main problem confronting the United States today is there aren't enough white babies being born in this country. He was an advisor to presidents of the United States. He wrote the book in 1987. He says, there are, if we don't change this and change it rapidly, white people will lose their numerical majority in this country and this will no longer be a white man's land. Now, I'm not misrepresenting, misrepresenting this. I'm telling you exactly, almost exactly what he says. He says, there are three things we can do to solve this. Number one, we could pay women to have babies as they have been doing in Western European nations for years. Then he says, and these are his words, not mine, Unfortunately, we would have to pay women of all colors to have babies, so we don't want to do that. He says the second thing we could do is increase the number of legal immigrants that are allowed into this country every year. Then once again, he says, unfortunately, the vast majority of those wanting to come to this country today are people of color, so we don't want to do that. The third thing he says, and white men, women had better pay attention to this, 60% of the fetuses that are aborted every year are white. If we could keep that 60% alive, that would solve our birth dearth. Does that sound like racism to you? Can you talk a little bit about the trauma associated with? The trauma associated with it? One of the main traumas is, it tells white people that they are superior because of the lack of melanin in their skin. And then they find out suddenly that we've got a black president. That's traumatic, that's where the trauma is. Living a lie, finding out the truth is traumatic. Finding out now recently that within 30 years, White people will be in the numerical minority in this country is going to be traumatic. White people are scared to death right now, particularly white males. They're scared to death that they are going to lose their power in the future. And they are. But if you want to get ready for the future, if you want to be treated well in the future, treat others well in the present. What we do in the present constructs the future. We called the Japanese, and you'll pardon me, but this is what we call them, slant-eyed little yellow movement. We didn't say that about the Germans. After the war, we rebuilt Germany and Japan, and we get along beautifully with the Japanese. That was in 1945 that we finally won that war. How how many years ago was that? Figure that out quickly. I'm not a math person, but... You're not a math person, but you know it wasn't that far. And it didn't take 50 years for us to, to have peace with the Japanese and the Germans, even though, even though we dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. The Japanese hadn't killed 10 million people. Nowhere near that. We didn't drop any bombs on Germany, any any atomic bombs on Germany. They were a different kind of people. We couldn't afford to do that. We killed how many Japanese people with two atomic bombs? And they forgave us. You want to talk about forgiveness? You want to talk about changing this thing? I cannot understand how Japanese people can stand the sight of any of us, and yet they do. I cannot understand 
why black people who have been subjected to the ugliness that they've been subjected to in this country can get up every morning and go to work among us and not be absolutely furious. And I don't understand why we allow white people to behave the way they do. I don't understand that. And my third graders, after they'd gone through the exercise, couldn't understand it and wouldn't tolerate it. And when they went up to junior high and a junior high teacher used the N-word, one of my, my former students said, if you're gonna use that word, I'm gonna go out in the hall until you stop using it, because we don't use that word in this school. That was a, sixth, a seventh grader who told his teacher off. When we have enough students who are willing to confront people who are making racist, sexist, ageist, homophobic statements, we're gonna be better off. We have got to stop tolerating the intolerable. If it's intolerable for my black cousins and every black person on this earth is one of my cousins, if it's intolerable for them, it's intolerable for me. I will not tolerate it. I will not tolerate it. That is not that. I am required not to tolerate that kind of treatment for the people who are related to me. And that's every person on the face of the earth. If your ignorance is such that you will mistreat somebody because of your ignorance about the color of their skin, don't do it around me. Number one, I've been threatened with death lots of times. Now I say, go for it, fool. My husband died four years ago. Being with him would not be a bad thing for me. Death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. Living a worthless, useless life is much worse. But essentially, The Birth Dearth is a book created by a white guy um, discussing um, population control in the United States and how the white race was losing footing at being the majority in the United States, right? And as Jane Elliott was saying, there are three options to address this problem. Pay women to have kids, ha open our borders to immigration, but both those options meant that they couldn't just limit it to white women being paid to have kids or white countries immigrating here. So that was a no. But what they could address was the fact that 60% of abortions in this country are done and performed on white women. Even though that was not its intention. If you don't know, Google Margaret, Margaret Sanger and her real eugenics policies, the fact that she wanted to sterilize disabled people, people with mental health issues, black people. She literally said black people are weeds that need to be exterminated. Hence why 75% of all Planned Parenthoods are in predominantly people of color areas. But again, a conversation for another day. But clearly, this is a reflection of the fact that you guys are the ones that get abortions the most. So attacking that number and leaving you without any bodily autonomy over that choice in your body can reduce that number so that you are forced to have babies no matter the circumstance, no matter your life path, no matter whether you want a baby or not. All of those things are meant to attack the fact that you are the ones getting abortions in the 60 percentile. Okay? So this is truly a fight between the men you sleep with, your dad, your uncle, the men in your family, and you putting it in real terms and you guys have never had to fight alone for anything that you've won you've gotten it in the most diabolical ways by faking that you're going to help people by faking that you're down with the movement and the cause in order to get what you want out of the situation <sighs> So when it comes, when I'm telling you and I'm speaking directly to you, and you're probably going to hear this a lot online, this is a commentary that's been going crazy now that it's officially been overturned. But this is really your fight. 
though we are collateral collateral damage in this fight we've been fighting for so long we've been fighting for everything about our identity we've been fighting and you have not stuck beside us you have not fought by us where were you when you found out that the rate of a black woman dying in this country during childbirth was like in it, 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 it's like, it's like astronomical where were you when black femicide has been the leading cause of death in black women every five hours a black woman dies by the hands of her partner in like where are you guys fighting for the things that are really affecting our communities you don't actually want to make community and build solidarity with us you know that you can use us to get to what you want but you don't actually want to really really be down for us and really really be there for us so we are setting a strong boundary with you you go you protest you riot you do it you you do it and see how easy it is to get done let's see you pull your weight for the first time ever not only that because if we're really keeping it a buck you guys are the ones with the access to the men that believe this bullshit you have the intimate access of knowledge to discuss things with these people, to change their minds, to give them reading, to offer them a new perspective, but you never do. I think it was over 49 women in 2016 voted for Trump or it was in the 50 percentile of white women. That's a lot of you. And that number went up in 2020 to 55% of y'all voted for Trump somebody's lying somebody's effing lying because if there's that many of you who vote for someone who literally 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 doesn't care about women at all and doesn't care about your rights at all but the majority of you voted for them where are your children where are the people in this generation who are feeling the brunt of these choices where are they where are they? I heard someone say this on TikTok, which I thought was such a good way to put it. Stop voting in support of what your husband wants and what your dad may have wanted and start voting for the future of your children. And maybe we'd see a difference in this country. Maybe. 55% of y'all. It's sick. And going back to what my original point is, you have to clean up your locality before you can start directing what people need to do and how people need to act. Black women, over 99% of us voted for Joe Biden. We always vote with everyone's best interests in mind because that's how we are able to tie our safety, our protection, in this country we have to vote with everybody's interest in mind so we do you guys vote for your personal interest and not even for your personal interest because voting for these people is directly against your interest because now you guys don't have rights over your own wombs it's not making sense you guys these are your fathers your uncles your grandfathers your boyfriends that have a difference of opinion than you these are the people that you can touch and talk to directly and intimately and discuss these topics with. You you think they want to hear it from me? You think you think they want to they'd be receptive to hearing it from my mouth? Of course not. You guys sleep with these people. They're in your household, they're in your bed, they're in your family, and you guys just ignore it. You don't even try. You don't even try to talk to grandpa about his racist beliefs. You don't even try to talk to your dad about loving Trump. You don't even try to discuss with your boyfriend that that is was celebrating that Roe v. Wade was overturned today. You don't even try to do that. You need to clean up your locality before you start telling anybody what to do and how to go. Because my side of the street is clean, babe. I just keep getting oppressed for no reason. It's time for you to lift a finger in this fight and do something. 
It really is. I'm tired of it. And don't gaslight me. If you don't like what I have to say, you don't have to like this video. It is what the fuck it is. But I'm speaking facts. Us women of color, BIPOC women, are exhausted by carrying everyone's civil rights and needs on our fucking backs. We're done. We're setting the boundary. We're being selfish now. You fight. You fight. This is going to affect you the most, so you fight. You do it. You do the work for once in your fucking lives. Please, talk to your family. Talk to your aunt. Talk to your uncle. Talk to your cousins. Talk to the people in your life that you know are conservative and have a conversation with them. Have as many as you can. You may not be able to change their minds, but they'll think differently over time. Expose them to it. You don't want to do that because you're okay with the oppression that you get as long as you're higher than us on the totem pole, which is sick, which is sick. While all of us below you are breaking our backs to try and make this entire country a better place for all of us. You guys are the one group of women that repeatedly vote against the better interests of our collective uterus havingness every time and for what to get the approval of your husband like what do you want us to do so you can be in the oppressor's bed still being oppressed it's very confusing you're playing a losing game and you lost the game so now it's time for you to win it back do something do something okay in general, I just kind of want to say, close off before we start reacting to the videos and say a couple things. I honestly... <sighs> this is setting a very specific precedence in this country. And if you think they're going to stop at our rights, you're fucking wrong. On this channel, I did a YouTube documentary reaction video to the, to the documentary Jesus Camp that used to be free on YouTube, but now you can rent it for like $2.99 or something. And if you want to have a peek into the window of what this side is thinking, they're not stopping here. This is only the beginning and how they have indoctrinated their children for years to confuse and conflate that their political views and their religious views are intertwined in this country. Even though this country is supposed to be secular, you need to watch Jesus Camp. It is a document, documentary made in 2006, and it's truly a disturbing window into that side and what they're doing and what they have been doing for generations and generations and generations to prepare for this very mo moment that we're living through now. This is a long con. This is a slow burn game. They've been building it brick by brick by brick by brick until it all came together a, a last week. This this is not new. This is not this is this is something that has been on the docket for the conservatives to address since it happened 50 years ago. That is why I'm so upset with the Democratic Party, because every chance they had to make sure this never happened, they didn't take it. So if you want to watch me reacting to it, I'll link it down below. If you want to watch the full thing, um, I'll also link where you can rent it on YouTube down below. I highly recommend it if you want to see the mindset, if you want to see the level, the money, the the stranglehold they have, and what they are what they are mobilizing and preparing to do. If you want any of that information, if you want to know any of that, I fully think you should watch that. That's my rant for now. Um, I, I I guess to wrap it all up, I'll say this: I'm. You've never been, I, I, I'm, I'm wrapped in a lot of privilege right now because I know that I can get an abortion still and have access to that. I am pro-choice, have always been pro-choice. I just think it's wild that in 2022, when my mother was in her 20s in the 1980s, she had more rights over her own body than I do.
now in 2022 it's it's psychotic it's wrong it's disgusting um I think that at the end of the day I still do have a lot of privilege in this situation and I recognize that my heart and my money and my um whatever I can do is going out to those who do not so that is why in the description box I'm going to have a bunch of resource links for y'all to you know organize around and hopefully donate and help out with of course um I think that I'm just really really scared for what this means if we're regressing like this the ball is rolling and you know at the end of the day I just don't know how bad it's gonna get before it gets better and I'm scared I'm scared and I'm pissed but I'm scared <sighs> So, let me move this up. Okay. So, now is a part where I the black girl actually reacts. So, what I'm going to do and how we're going to do this is I'm going to go from oldest Jubilee video to newest. We'll end with the newest one. Um, and I will be reacting to them. So, I'll be pausing and saying my commentary on each one of the videos. And... Um, yeah, like I said, resources, organizing resources will be in the description box below. Places you can donate to and all of that will be in the description box below. Um, but that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to start with the oldest Jubilee Media Middle Ground episode about the pro-choice versus pro-life debate. And... I think it's going to be super interesting. I think it's going to be really, really interesting. So, yeah. My name is Patty, and I am pro-life. I had two abortions. I know what happens to the emotional and psychological part of women. My name's John, and I'm pro-choice. Six years of the Planned Parenthood of Golden Gate. My name is Marie, and I am pro-life, and I help women reverse their abortion once they've started them, if they would like to do so. All right, all of my pro-choice people, please go over there. All of my pro-life people, come to this side. All right, first, very important question. Do you agree with this statement? A hot dog is a type of No, don't do it. <laughs> well, I'm the only one. Oh, well, sandwich is just something between two pieces of bread, and that's what a hot dog is. I disagree because <laughs> a sandwich is two pieces of bread, right? But a hot dog bun isn't two pieces of bread. A hot dog is its own thing. Yeah. And just the way it's eaten is different. If you had a hot dog bun and you put um, like deli meats in there, would that be still a... Would it be a I've sandwich? That would still be a hot dog though still, right? I mean, it's like, oh, okay. Okay, so this is really interesting. Um, Cause I watch, I, I remember I used to watch Jubilee Media back in this time. So the setup is different, everything's different. You can tell that they have a budget now, um, but they don't do this anymore. They don't do like a warm up question where it's like, okay, this is how we're gonna explain the game in a very quick way. You're gonna go to your sides. We're gonna have like a pseudo question that is, you know, silly, but still people have opinions about and we're gonna just warm everybody up see everyone's laughing it's silly it's a silly debate and i think that they should bring that back because it may like cool down the room a little bit when you start off kind of silly in that way i don't know anyway sometimes i question my beliefs around abortion Oh, right, oh. we start talking. <laughs> um, yeah, because sure. you hear the other person's perspective and you're like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I think I 
question mine often because I could imagine that if I wasn't living my life based on my Christianity, um, I would want women to have that choice as well. I used to be a pro-life feminist. <laughs> really? Yes, until I had an abortion. Mm. Actually, I had two. And after I realized what I had done, I knew I had made the biggest mistake in my life. I realized that it was, it wasn't my, I shouldn't be taking the life of a child. So after that, I struggled with it for 35 years with my abortions and so I have no doubts. I am all the way pro-life. Pro but I believe fundamentally that the woman should have that right to make the decision. Absolutely. And it's, I've never been anybody who's pro-abortion. Oftentimes they don't have good choices and they're picking the lesser of the bad choices. Yeah, I just feel like uh, my, I'm very certain of my views because uh, I want to respect that everyone has that option. Um, and I think that if you take that away, you endanger children more than if you allow them to make that choice for themselves, so. But she, a woman can choose for herself, but she doesn't have the right to choose for someone else. Because if, if a child is inconvenient as a toddler, are you gonna kill that child as a toddler? No. I think we're talking about a completely but different no, thing, though, in that science. regard. we're talking science. We're talking science. And I'm saying, like, a lot of times women have to have abortions because of medical reasons. That's like a lot of time. Oh, oh, 1%. Right. Yes. Okay, so this is kind of interesting because they are timed. And I think they're still timed, but it's not as obvious that it's like, okay, time, you have to stop talking now in the newer versions. Now, I want to go back to what the first girl, the blonde girl, said to this question because the original question was, sometimes I question my beliefs around abortion. Okay, so there were two pro-lifers that came and one pro-choice person that came. What the blonde was saying was, if I didn't live a Christian-based life, I, could, I would want women to have the choice to make, you know, that choice to have an abortion or to not. What pisses me off immediately about that is this is supposed to be a secular country, right? Religion is not supposed to be involved in our political system, even though it very much is, as we all know, but it's not supposed to be. So to me, even having this debate or even the fact that Roe v. Wade was overturned is fundamentally not a going against the constitution and the tenets of what this country was supposed to be about what people are fighting for is the choice we're not saying you get an abortion you get an abortion you get an abortion we're saying if you are in a situation where you get pregnant unexpectedly or non-consensually or any of those things, you have the right as a person in the body that you have to decide whether or not you want to adopt, you want to take care of the baby, or you want an abortion. That's all that's being fought for. So the rights of the people who support pro-life are not even being encroached on because at the end of the day, it's your choice. So you be about it and you say it with your chest. If you wouldn't get an abortion, if you're in that situation, then just don't get the abortion. That's just the point blank period. So I think the right has done a good job of recategorizing the conversation to saying that if you're not pro-life, you're just an abortion fiend which isn't the case. And the fact that she brought up her Christian faith immediately also was clued me in because it's like, girl, where life starts and ends at, you know, conception or not at conception, those are all interpretations based in Christian faith. Those are philosophical questions that we can debate all day. When do you think life begins? When do you think the start of life is? There's no concrete answer because a lot of that is subjective based on your faith, based on how you were raised. All of those things are subjective. But to then dictate how other women are supposed to be happy and okay with being pregnant unexpectedly or non-consensually and, and take the same stance as you because you're Christian, that's where I have a huge fucking problem with all of it.
with all of it. So, um, yeah. And I feel like um, the woman that was saying, like, you know, I used to be a feminist. I had two abortions and I've been struggling with that for 35 years goes to my point about white women in general in the beginning where it's like you are basing how other women who are different than you, who have different experiences than you, should live their life when it comes to their bodily autonomy based on you regretting the two abortions you had 35 years ago. Does that make sense either? You're supposed to have the freedom to choose for yourself what makes you feel good, what is right for your life. So you had the choice, you used the choice, but you regretted it. So now every woman in the same position you were in twice is going to regret it? No. There are plenty of women that have had abortions that are better for it and have kids later. There are plenty of people who have had abortions that, you know, never wanted kids, knew they couldn't handle it. All sorts of circumstances, the medical issue, all the, and just complications in general, like all sorts of circumstances, you know what I mean? So I feel like it's coming from a very I perspective, and that's what it need, what needs to change. You're only thinking about yourself, you're only centering yourself, and you think everybody should live the way that you've chosen to live. And the thing is, you've chosen to live that way. So are you pro-choice? You know what I mean? Kind of. Because you're actively choosing to live this way. So you can still not get an abortion if you don't want one. You can still live that lifestyle if you want to. That Christian belief style. And you can keep to yourselves and do that kind of thing. But to encroach on other people's rationalities because you yourself believe that this is right and true because you're Christian or whatever. Or you had a lived experience that you regretted. It's just, it's really some white people shit. I'm not gonna lie. Next prompt. I know someone who has had an abortion. My sister had an abortion. Um, almost two years ago, I found out I was pregnant and had an abortion forced on me by a man twice my age who made a ton of money and I felt like I had no other choice. If I wasn't a Christian, and if I didn't believe the things that I believed, I would be pro-choice, like 100%. But at the end of the day, like to my core, I believe that all human life is so sacred, and it's not our choice, it's never been our choice. I realized that I shouldn't have had that choice because I was choosing life and death over another human being. It's taking a life. But I do understand, definitely understand where you guys came from. The only difference we have is when that uh, fetus becomes a human wife. If that's a human being, then my tonsils are human beings. I think there are that's answers. That's a scary that. gray area. And in the Bible, you did say, you know, I don't know what part of Christianity, but Jesus says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Not a sparrow falls from the sky without my knowing. I feel like I really respect yeah. you and your faith. Um, I, res I respect that that's your feeling and that you, know, that, that you all feel that way. But I also feel like um, one can feel that way regardless of the Bible, regardless of Christianity. You know, it's one of those things that happens and has happened actually for decades you know, for a while, and people make that decision, and it is their decision, they make that decision for whatever reasons, you know, I and mean, again, you you help people who have taken a pill first, then change their mind, and I think that's great, yeah. but if you have one and you feel regretful, then deal with it. If you have one, you don't really feel regretful, or you feel like it really truly was the best decision for you, then that's what happens, and I just think we all know people like that, or I, don't, I just don't feel like we have any right to, to force a particular way and, 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 you know, I think it's great to, to try to just be open, you know? Okay, I knew what she was trying to say, which was what I was talking about in the first question, but she didn't articulate it fully, but I appreciate her sentiments because what she's expressing is everyone should have the choice to choose what they want to choose. No one is encroaching on your right by saying they're pro-choice. In fact, they're opening it up for more options to be possible for people with uteruses to exist and feel like they're be they have bodily autonomy over themselves. Again, that white Christian girl 
though she had experienced an abortion on her own, which was, you know, obviously forced upon her, but she keeps saying this thing of, if I wasn't Christian, I'd be pro-choice. And it's like, you can be Christian and pro-choice because you can exist within this space. You know, if you believe that life starts based on that fucking verse in the Bible that you just had up your ass to quote, then you can still continue to believe that that's true. No one's saying you have to say that that's not true. No one's saying you'll be held down and forced to have an abortion every time you get pregnant. No one is saying that. But what you're saying to other people who don't agree with your Christian faith, because again, this country sells itself as a melting pot. There are Muslim people, there are Jewish people, there are people who believe in, um, you know, whatever the fuck, people who don't believe in anything, people who believe in Satan, people who believe in whatever. But the point of this country is you have the freedom to express any religion that you want to express because that is in the tenets of this country. So if your religious belief is able to be favored politically because your Christian religious belief, which is deeply intertwined with white supremacy, mind you, birth dearth, Okay, Um, deeply, deeply entrenched in white supremacy and conservatism and all of that. Why is it that only your Christian belief gets to hold political sway? But when it comes to faiths like Muslim and Muslim faiths and Jewish faiths where they say it's okay to have an abortion, those don't get put on the spot to be pushed at all because it's not a religious conversation. It's about your material circumstances and how you feel about the problem. So if you want to go and be guided by your religious mind, that's up to you. If you don't, that's up to you and it should be up to you, you know? I sometimes feel judged for my beliefs around abortion pretty judged around my beliefs. <laughs> hey guys. Hey it's, been? it's been a long time. I think we all yeah. feel that way it's because because it's an emotional, mm-hmm. a very emotional topic. I've actually been verbally attacked by a lot of the pro-choice people, you know, about what I went through with the regret, the alcoholism, and all of that stuff that tied into the abortion. For me, it's something that Marie said a little bit a while ago about her Christian faith, and implicit in that is that someone who's pro-choice isn't Christian. I was raised a Roman Catholic. I consider myself a Christian. I don't believe that uh, there's anything in Christianity, as I understand it, that uh, requires me to believe that abortion is murder. I, I grew up in a Christian home. My mom's a pastor, but um, they also respect that they know that it's my ultimate decision, and they know that what it is I'm going to do, what I'm going to choose for my life, that they don't have control over, and that I am an adult. Sometimes in the argument between the two sides, there's a lack of respect for the fact that, like, I don't have to agree with you. Mm-hmm. You live your life the way that you want to, and I'll live it the way I want to, as long as you're not stopping yeah. me. Yeah, I mean, the question was, do you feel judged or whatever by your decision? And I think both it's right that everyone went down because each side judges the other side. What I think pisses me off about the pro-life side is that it's only their way or the highway. Their side isn't inclusive. It's it's based on Christian values. It's based in a lot of white supremacist values. Again, the birth dearth. Um, but it's one of those things where at least with the pro-choice side, the pro-lifers or people who believe that are included in that side. The pro-choice side is simply just saying, you can do you, I can do me, and we can go our separate ways, you know? So, anyway. I have children. I have two kids, one a son who's 30, uh, and then a daughter who's 28. I have one son who is 36. He's adopted. I couldn't have children biologically. I convinced a doctor to give me a tubal ligation because I didn't feel I punished myself for having the abortions. I have a daughter, she's a year old, and she's in heaven. How do you feel having children that your view about abortion? To me, it, yeah, in my experience at Planned Parenthood, almost everybody had kids. And it, 
the, the slogan, if you will, of, of Planned Parenthood was no child and unwanted child. Not, and we wanted our children, and that's why we chose to have them. What about all the people that would gladly take care of that child that cannot have a pregnancy to Pretty save their option. life? Well, because the woman has to go, has to go through Nine months for a whole life that a child could have? It, 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 I think he did such a poor job of saying his point and I it's like come on man like you worked with Planned Parenthood you should have the slogans out the wazoo but no uh, uh, to her part okay pregnancy isn't easy it's not fun okay it changes your life whether you're keeping the baby or not you know what i mean and so at the end of the day you may view it as nine months versus a child's whole life or whatever but nine months can seem like an eternity when you didn't want to have the child in the first place when pregnancy is painful when you're going through changes in your body that you didn't have to go through had you been able to have access to an abortion why not just have let people do what they want to do those who want to adopt or uh, have their kids adopted, put into the, you know, adoptive system and whatever. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Those, those who, those who don't, that's okay. It's all fine at the end of the day. But I think the point being made too by her foregoes, because you can tell that they've been indoctrinated in a way. There are so many children in the foster system. There's half a million kids in the foster system today currently okay they're just not the kind of kids that the people she's talking about wants okay they're older they're black they're p they're poc they they are have disabilities you know they're not just freshly born babies they're not white like those people have what th their own requirements as to why they're not doing more to get those kids out of the foster care system if if people the so the amount the roaring amounts of people who want children but can't have any and are willing to adopt why don't they go adopt these kids out of the foster care system oh they won't because they have another criteria as to what kind of child they want and those kids don't fit that so instead of actually doing something to help out those children that are already here from unwanted pregnancies or situations that weren't conducive to children or children shouldn't have been born into those situations or circumstances they don't actually want to help those kids because why are there still half a million kids in foster care tell me that okay um i think one of the things that i re immediately reacted to is that Okay, nine months, whatever, but there are so many children, not just in America, but the world over, that don't have loving parents, that are not in a loving situation, that are not cared for, fed, clothed, loved. And I, and I think that is the most important thing, to care about our children because they are our future. So I mean, the child in the womb has no value whatsoever? No, I don't think so at all. I'm not saying that. I never said okay, that. Okay, I'm just asking. I'm just yeah. saying that to me that's unclear whether it's you know this or that or this or that. And despite the fact that you say there are people out there that want to adopt this child or want to take care of this child, there are still so many that are not. And that's I don't think that agree. wrong makes this right though. No, I understand that. I'm not saying that. I'm only I'm only re I'm only responding to your comments about about like my my view is I don't I don't personally want to have kids. I want to adopt all my Me children too, because of that reason. And because I lived with a, a family that took me in when my family didn't want me. And so I understand that one, the foster system and adoption is not that easy. And if we're making it about taking care of the child, yeah, let's do that. Let's take care of the children. But we need to make sure that there are opportunities in place for all the children to be successful mm -hmm. so that that child has a world that co to come into that's actually gonna be good to it because we don't live in that world right now. We don't offer those things to our children. We should talk a lot of the people that came from a ton of adversity who've now made it in this world, who we're literally came from We're not talking about that. Lives. We're not talking about the success. Yeah, but you happens. can't. We're talking about people that are. Life. We're talking about kids today that yeah. do not and have their a home. worth. That worth, in my opinion, is exactly equal to a 20-week baby. I totally in a understand, and I respect that. I'm only saying my only comment was. I feel like it's unfair to be like, well, blah blah blah, nine months. Why can't you just have a kid for nine months and then give it up? Oh. 
job this guy he did but i think both those people said what needed to be said i really appreciated what that black girl said and she put that girl in her place and you saw her face because she looked fucking stupid as fuck because it's like how are you gonna sit here and preach about all these people that want people this girl was actually adopted and the reason why she wants abortion access is because she wants to adopt all her fucking kids so the people that you're talking about are her but she's for the pro-choice side. So you look fucking dumb because you're just trying to get a gotcha moment. You're trying to say, well, I think that that life, the child's life outside of the womb who needs a family is the same as the ch- a 20-week child. It fundamentally is not because the child outside of the womb needs food now, needs clothes now, need lo- needs love now, needs nurturing now, needs all of these things now. It can live outside of a person's body and survive it. I don't think... Anyway, I'm getting too heated, but you know what I mean. And if you're not actively going to adopt said child who's out here, who needs food, who need, who's in an abusive household, who's dealing with neglect, and you're actually going to take that child in, then shut your mouth about it. It's fine if you personally have that personal opinion, but not everybody does. And in this world, you have to keep it a buck. Adopting kids isn't as that easy. The foster system is terrible. And kids... It's flooded. It's overrun with kids. This is not a system that is meant to make sure that kids are safe, that kids are protected, that kids are loved, and kids are nurtured. The ones that are already here. Do you see what I mean? Ciao. All right. Last question of the day. I was surprised by someone's response today. Um, I wasn't expecting to hear some of the stories about people's uh, lives and their experiences um, who've had abortions, and like I can only I can only imagine the pain that is associated to making that decision, and I have a lot of compassion and sympathy f- for people who go through that. Um, I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting it to be as calm as it was. Um, I think that there were moments, but I think for the most part, we were respectful of each other. And um, I still think that you guys are awesome people, I mean, outside of this situation. (laughs) I wasn't surprised at how this has gone, because when we were all talking outside, it didn't make any difference whose side was on whose side, and we, and we all bonded right away, you know. Sometimes you, our levels got a little bit raised, but you know what, We're, we all respect each other. No matter what you do, you've, you've heard all the arguments. There's not gonna be one argument where you're like, oh my gosh, I just changed my mind. <laughs> no, it's never gonna, you know, people are who they are, and it usually takes a certain situation happening, but I think it's healthy to have the dialogue. I think it doesn't happen enough. It happens too much behind our computers. And Oh, okay. That's cool. <laughs> Sorry, dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So many thoughts. I think that that really, really, it it, it was interesting. It, these points are, anyway, you clearly know what side I'm on or whatever, but what I liked about how this structure was, they started off with a silly question and they ended up with a reflective question, which I appreciated because it's like, okay, but now let's understand that we're all people, we're all people with opinions, we all came here today to share those opinions, and that was the baseline for this. So the animosity, the feelings, all of that kind of thing, leave it leave it at the end of the questioning, leave it when the timer beeps, and you can see me as a human and I can see you as a human. And I I, I really liked how this was formatted. And I, it's crazy that this was the, you know, one that happened the least recently. Okay, so, okay, now we're going to go to the two-year-old one. 